What's up everyone? Welcome to my channel, the best place for language teachers that are looking for tips, ideas, recommendations for their language lessons. I'm Mary and today I'm here to show you three listening activities for you to use with your students. And without further ado, let's jump into them. So if you've been teaching for a while, you know that pen poll activities work really well. And yes, I'm talking about writing activities. So for example, if you work for an English school, you could maybe find another English school in another country, talk to the teacher, and then your students are going to start writing letters or even emails to each other. And this is really exciting, especially if your students are kids or teenagers, because they can talk to different people, they can really get to know other cultures, you know, when they keep practice the writing skills. So why don't we use the same activity for audios? Well, I do, and it's been working really well. So there are two ways to do it. So the first one is I use WhatsApp. So whatever app you use for audio messages, it can be Messenger or WeChat. So what I do is um, one way is ask the student to record short message. So a short story, a funny, or, you know, fun story, or maybe something interesting about themselves. And then I'm going to use this audio during another class. So it's going to look like that. And I was living with an Irish family as an au pair. I used to work from Monday to Friday, so that day I wasn't working. One strange thing from Ireland is that they don't use curtains. So around 8 a.m. every morning I woke up. Uh, the thing is uh, that day my bed was wet. Did I pee on it? Was the first thing I thought. Uh, but that had no sense. So I touched the roof to see if it came from there, but nothing. Where could that water came from? I called my mom desperated and I told her my situation. Obviously, she thought that I was crazy and that it was me. And then what I do is I just ask them what happened. So what was the story? Do you think this is a true story? What happened to this student? Was she happy? Or um, what was the problem here? And basically, it's very important, you know, to expose students to other students because it's proven that throughout our life, we are going to talk to more non-native speakers, you know, than English native speakers. So they do have to understand other accents. They do have to talk to people from other, other places, you know, to have this cultural awareness. So this is one way. And another way is just a very basic pen poll activity, you know, but with an audio, literally, I just connect two students. So I've got an Italian student and a Spanish student, and I just get them to talk. I give them weekly topics so they're not going to be talking just about their lives you know because otherwise the vocabulary would be very limited so I can say depending on the level I can say well this week for example you are going to be talking about um Brexit or the consequences of Brexit okay or this week you're going to be talking about bodybuilders you know so they've got these um, topics to talk about and they have to send each other audios obviously this is going to help with their speaking as well but it's an amazing listening activity so my second recommendation would be using the six minute English from the BBC Learning English website. They've got loads of listenings with exercises and the topics are very random. So it's amazing because you can just choose, you know, the topic that is more relevant to your student for their specific interests. So if the student is going to take an exam, probably all of them are going to be relevant. So look, last week I've tried with this one here, a future with, with our doctors. So there are many ways to do it. For example, you can start asking your student, what do you think this listening is going to be about? Well, in this case, a bit obvious, you know, you can see the photo here. So you can discuss a bit, you know, as a bit of, of, a, uh, for, of a warm up. And if it's your style, you can even pre-teach some words, you know, it depends on the, on the level of the student. It depends on your goal. So there are some words here, look, they do put the vocabulary. So words that your students might not know. So you might start with this, you know, talk to them about, well, freckles, cancerous, do you know these words and let's go through them together. And after doing this exercise, you can go to the listening itself. 
I personally think six minutes is too much for a lesson, you know, especially if you are teaching one to you one, it feels like an eternity. So what I tend to do is before the lesson, obviously, I listen to the audio myself and I get, you know, the best part for them. So maybe it's going to be from second 30 until minute three. And we listen a maximum of three minutes together. And then lots of things you can do. You can just ask, two random questions about it, to you know if they were paying attention, you know, to all the, the, the details, or you can just ask them to give you the context and ask them to listen to it again, and then ask for more detailed questions. So basically you can do whatever you want with it. And if your student um, can't understand very well, in, in if they are starting feeling frustrated, for example, you can just go and listen with the transcript which is a lovely thing you know because they can really associate words and sounds at the same time so if we we played all the audio twice and the students couldn't understand anything well probably this is the wrong level so probably choose another another audio the next time you know choose better but if you realize it's just a matter of um giving it another try you can try with the transcript here and there's always like a quiz question in the middle of it, um, interesting one. So for example, in this one, look, my quiz question is about human skin. And it's fun because you can try to guess the answer, you know, together with your student. And then you send them the link as homework so they can listen to it by themselves and they can try, you know, to look for the words, look up at the dictionary for the words that they don't know, and they can practice a bit more by themselves. Well, and the third suggestion for today, it couldn't be easier. You know that I think when we take, you know, a cell tower, a Delta course, we get a bit strict with lesson plans. And, but I've learned that sometimes you just have to let it go, you know, let it be. <laughs> you don't really have to have a super strict plan, especially if you've got an advanced student that just wants to practice speaking or listening. So what I do sometimes is just, I go to BBC, for example, BBC News, I click on video, Video, and I just asked the student to choose a video. So let's say here, for example, you've got nine minutes. This is way too long, two minutes, or well, one minute 55, so uh, 56. So this is fantastic. So I click on it and we are going to have the video here. Uh, obviously, this is a listening exercise. So what you can do is just not let them see it. You know, just scroll down and don't let them see it. But play the video um, and listen to the video together with the student. It's going to be the first time for yourself as well. So you just play it. Sometimes if I lost my nerve, I would have to say, what would Mercedes do? What would Mercedes do? And then you can discuss. That's it. So ask your student what happened there, you know, why, why this happened, or, you know, it's hard to ask questions, you know, to really make sure that they understood the listening. So you can, you have to really pay attention at the same time. So you can ask for detailed questions. You can ask for words, vocabulary. And basically you are going to be informed, you know, you are going to keep up to date with the news at the same time as practicing your students listening. And that's it for today. Now you should go and check my speaking activities playlist or my other videos, you know, they're great. They're going to help you. Happy teaching guys.